Good morning. I think we can. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, I think we can wrap uh, the uh, our session uh, by noon. So what we'll do since uh, Subhan had the, the question and answer session, I will uh, I try to kind of stir the pot a little bit uh, in a way following the, the Humboldt's legacy. Uh, I was in the field for about a week now, so so I'm kind of try to kind of just to give a, a kind of a, a different. Uh, flavor to uh, to what we uh, would yeah. Yeah. yeah to give a different flavor and also to put uh, things into a broader scheme of uh, priorities uh, to kind of uh, to kind of give a, a synthesis uh, and a summary to this uh, i will do a synthesis uh, i have a, a small uh, note uh, that i've done uh, over the morning but uh, the, the the question of why Humboldt got forgotten I think it, I was I was kind of you know like for our for us the Darwin uh, is kind of for most of us the the, the god of our the the, the temple and then uh, to me Wallace is the god of my temple it's the Asian man from Asia man from the middle class and uh, and then the, you know why all has been forgotten, and then came Humboldt. And uh, when you look into uh, some of the uh, some of the, uh, the literature, and uh, and when especially when uh, uh, Dr. Sandun uh, talking about it, it's actually he is the one who actually uh, gave, gave the, the initial inspiration and the foundation of that thought process of the the, the greatest of our kin, uh, and why he is forgotten. Uh, so I was trying to actually think this through for the past few days uh, I, when I was in the field actually. So I thought, okay, it's, it's actually the legacy of the man where, you know, you have to be in the, the field to seek to know. Uh, I think that uh, you need to kind of somehow tie this to the, the present context. The present context dominate the, dominates the, the need of conservation, how we, how we save uh, what is being uh, not what is be, what is being lost? What is what it has been uh, losing and also in a, in a very rapid, alarming rate. So in that light, I try to put few slides uh, to you all. Uh, not that I'm an expert on uh, that particular context, and in front of uh, uh, botanist, I'm actually nervous. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm lucky that I normally, I, I'm, I'm not nervous in the areas that I talk, but this is slightly a different thing for me also. It's to stir the pot. Uh, so so I, I try to uh, kind of talk about uh, the, 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 right, okay, I think this is what it's right. This, oh, that's the volume. Oops. Okay, I will ask you to, why it's uh, uh, the volume button. Right? Okay. So, so Humboldt's legacy. So Humboldt's legacy is he's, he's an explorer naturalist, so the, and uh, the contribution of uh, his uh, great, uh, diverse contributions to to uh, the natural history explorations, the science, and then the the, the, the greater scheme of biogeography. Uh, and uh, that, uh, uh, to me, is the is that his his desire, his hunger to seek to know, to to venture into the field and uh, to understand. And that understanding of uh, Humboldt plus uh, the contemporary his contemporary um, uh, naturalist provide the foundations for the the modern ecology and evolution that we we we, we enjoy and uh, celebrate. So. And that uh, the Humboldt's uh, legacy country, uh, continued into uh, our parts of the world. I think primarily through Wallace uh, in his uh, writings in the uh, mid nineteenth uh, century, and then uh, and then uh, in Sri Lanka in particular. Uh, I think to me the P.P. Darren Nagel as well. Uh, the, the Sri Lankan truly uh, like you know local uh version of uh, darwin or wallace or 
in a, in a, in a, in a, in a slightly different uh, scheme uh, uh, on hormones. Uh, Darren Eagle in this picture uh, shows that uh, it is one of his interesting biogeographic find uh, where he found this, uh, this dead whale in, uh, in uh, Bambalapitiya beach of uh, uh, western coast, uh, quite uh, basically in the capital uh, in 1960s and uh, right away he uh, described it as uh, uh, Nisaplodon uh, Ul, he written it Ulhota but it, uh, for in the text it says uh, Nisoplodon Ulhota which is the, the one with the uh, pointy nose but in the title he put as Hota Ulla uh, so uh, probably he didn't even edit that much <laughs> of his own text but uh, the so it uh, Okay, so one would say that it's, uh, it's kind of kind of like you know just uh, uh, kind of quick and dirty science. But in the other hand, the, 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 the credit of the man is that he right away recognizes as a, as a, as a distinctive uh, uh, taxonomic and uh, evolutionary lineage. And uh, after a few years, the the Mesoplodon hotaulla or the Daraniagalus beak whale, a new species, been synonymized with. Uh, uh, Mesoplodon gingodens, which is the, uh, the ginkgo tooth beak whale of Japan. Uh, and then uh, the story kind of died, uh, forgotten, and uh, Darren Eagle himself, uh, like uh, uh, Humboldt, uh, done a lot of uh, work in geology, uh, paleontology, uh, uh, you know, general natural history, ornithology, mammalogy, so, and so it's, it goes into that broader, like, you know, the people who knows everything kind of a, a, a standpoint. And uh, recently, about four years ago, four years ago, uh, a group of uh, uh, scientists from uh, New Zealand uh, started to look into the genetics of uh, whales, uh, especially the beak whales in the light of, uh, to understand cryptic species, uh, based on a specimen they found in uh, Palmyra Atoll in uh, Pacific Islands. Realize that though the, 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 they are, uh, that particular meat sample, the DNA produced by that particular meat sample from Y chromosome uh, and mitochondrial uh, markers were not matching with the few uh, uh, sequences available in their database for the gingkodons. So the, uh, luckily, and the, the, the tribute again to Darren Eagle or this humble nature or the approach where you document, you very well document, even how harsh it is, how quick it is, you document and available into the, the scientific community. So these people got this uh, the, uh, published paper by Darren Yekala and uh, came to Sri Lanka and got a sample from the skull and uh, showed that it is the same species. And based on that, they resurrect uh, Mesoplodon hotaula. Uh, Daraniagala's beak whale again about three years ago. So, so I think the Humboldt's legacy is there in even in Sri Lanka, just not just with the names of Humboldt here, but with the people with the same fashion. Uh, biogeography, in a, in a broader sense, is the is the study of the landscapes, the biodiversity. And then it's ecology and evolution. Or in another way, it's a land, it's life, and, and the life's responses to the, the environment or the climate and soil. So, so that's why that being kind of sidelined or the why the hero of that uh, science being sidelined. Next, please. Uh, the landscapes and their Diversity is under enormous threat. This is day, two days day, two days ago. I'm uh, talking uh, to uh, a group of students, and somebody was filming, and I said, "Just don't film because the things that I said that should not be heard <laughs> by the people of power." This red zone forest patch is uh, an intact patch uh, about three weeks ago. And now uh, this is about an acre being burnt and ready to uh, plant. Uh, and uh, and they actually the, the sad news is that they, these guys who burned this inform the forest department that they are going to burn it. And this is government forest. Anyway, so, 
So the landscapes are changing and under threat. Uh, the biodiversity that lives in it are under extreme threat and uh, the challenges are mounting. Next please. And the, the environmental literacy or science literacy, to me as a biologist, uh, it's the same. If you can't understand science, you might not understand the environment. And if you can't understand the environment, you might not understand the biological sciences. It's uh, kind of eroding. It's eroding in a, in a way, in a slightly different way, because in a, in a, in a, in a, in a community, uh, like in a, in a kind of a rural, forested uh, place, they would have this uh, knowledge came through their ancestors, through their day-to-day -day practices. Uh, in, uh, in, a, in a city that has to be kind of imported from somewhere or somebody has to be taught. And, uh, but the, the applications of that is minimal for, a, for, a, for increasingly a greater uh, percentage of population where more and more people are living in cities now than in the, the countryside. So the, the knowledge is eroding and that adds more pressure to the landscapes and biodiversity uh, because uh, fewer and fewer people would understand these problems. Next, please. Oops. Back. One back. Yeah. So, so the biogeography, the study of landscapes, its diversity, uh, like biodiversity living in it, and the 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 you know, uh, the the, uh, the knowledge of uh, ecology and evolution, or the animals and plants and their interactions, could be an ally and could be an uh, a tool that is, uh, I think probably underutilized or needed to be utilized in effectively, in, at least in the context of uh, tropics in Sri Lanka, to fight to save the, and uplift the landscapes, biodiversity, and the lot knowledge on, on Earth. So I just uh, thought to give a kind of a kind of anecdote uh, to kind of show, to kind of link what we, uh, we've heard uh, all today, like, you know, from the morning, uh, kind of small, short walk, a highly diverse place uh, with a lot of history and a culture of science and exploration, and then the practice of uh, documentation in the herbarium, and then the series of talks of celebrating a, a, a hero in our own kind, and then uh, to uh, application of modern technology, to uh, you know go into things that what hum Humboldt or Darwin or Wallace didn't know, at that time, like you know, things that uh, out of their reach, and but now we have that luxury. So, how we put this together? Just this is a small story. Uh, I okay. So we, let's start from our island again, Sri Lanka. This is Sri Lanka, and I don't have a, a marker. Can I? Oh, no, I just, okay. uh, so we, uh, yeah, it's a tropical island, continental island, located in the uh, southern tip of the uh, peninsula, India. Uh, it's a uh, it's about 65,000 uh, square kilometers. And in the middle, you have a central hill massif. And in the central massif, actually uh, kind of blocks uh, the, the monsoonal winds that come from uh, southwest, uh, uh, blowing into the continent uh, Asia uh, through the, uh, the, 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 the Indian Ocean, rich in uh, humidity, which provides a lot of rain. Uh, in the in the uh, southwestern monsoons, and then uh, in the in the in the in the winter, northern win boreal winter, the cool uh, air from uh, uh, the continent Asia blows from northeast uh, through uh, Sri Lanka again, and uh, gives a fair bit of more rain in the other uh, theoretically dry month, and uh, which gives uh, like a seasonal wet weather in the southwestern uh, section of the island, uh, which makes it very, our forest very wet and uh, full of leeches and dipterocarp dominated forest. Next please. And this uh, been uh, even further, like, you know, kind of uh, emphasized and uh, add more color to this, but because of its uh, uh, really unique uh, biogeographic uh, or geologic position, where we were about 49 degrees south, about 100, 150 million years ago. And uh, we, over a span of about 100 million years, we moved from 49 degrees south to five 
to 10 degrees north of the equator. I don't think any uh, island uh, of uh, our size, uh, together with India and Sri Lanka, the plate have been traveled this far along the surface of the planet in our known uh, record. So, so that gives us being a humid uh, sub uh, Antarctic kind of a or temperate island moved into a into a uh, past tropics and into a uh, tropical island and a continental island, but most of its journey over the past uh, that many years, next please, it's been uh, uh, separated from or partially, only partially connected to the Indian main Indian plate. So that adds more uh, of like uh, that facilitated the, the, the isolation and uh, speciation uh, within the island. So this, this particular figure shows that the dark greener patches are the old uh, uh, about 100 million year old uh, land masses and the light uh, shades of the land masses are the present land mass. So the beauty of this is that, uh, next please, that uh, our mountains are older than the Himalayas because Himalayas itself produce about uh, during the period of 40 million years. So, so the Sri Lankan mountains are like uh, much older than the mountains of Himalayas. Uh, why I stress this, I mean, I'm pretty sure most of this uh, uh, audience know this, uh, is that uh, these mountains of Sri Lanka is full of life. And this life has a unique kind of assemblage where as when the Gondwanan Indian plate moved and ferried all the Gondwanan life and earth with it and then hit uh, the, uh, uh, the Laurasian plate, and as a result, formed the Himalayas. But before forming the Himalayas, the Laurasian plants and animals started to move into this Gondwanan plate and uh, Gondwanan life the, that ferried through Indian Ocean started to move into uh, the uh, Laurasian plate. So there is an interchange. But what happened, as uh, Subhani mentioned, uh, there was this, uh, the, the, the pressure that uh, actually that, that, that causes because of that uh, collision, uh, started to quickly form the Himalayan range, preventing uh, the interchange. On top of that, the decan, uh, uh, the changes, climate change, microclimatic changes, and uh, the volcanic actions taken place in the decan plate, we call it the deca decan uh, uh, furnace, uh, basically kills off most of the the animals and plant, uh, the life that ferried all the way from 49 degrees south to the present state. So that's a kind of, in a way, of quite unfortunate. Uh, but in the way, it, it creates an opportunity about 30 million years ago uh, to new li uh, lineages to four. So, so there is a very rapid speciation uh, process taken place along the Western Ghats, uh, then that continued to up to Sri Lanka. But in Sri Lanka, being relatively better, uh, we don't know exactly how this decan furnace uh, acted on, uh, on our fauna and flora. Some believe that since we were better, uh, the dry conditions would be harsher on ours. Some uh, uh, suggest, the theories suggest that it is actually, uh, it provides a refuge needed. But anyway, so that, so the, the how that whole thing uh, uh, really relevant to the conservation story that I try to kind of uh, spin uh, is that so our mountains are old and we never we haven't capitalized these stories this way to our tourism we haven't capitalized these stories this way when we uh, use our mountains for agriculture and other uh, whatever the users that we use that land and this mountain for example has a uh, like the, the, the rocks are old southern rocks, Gondwanan rocks. And on, on those rocks, you have uh, southern lizards, like the, the Calotus uh, uh, nigrolabis, the, the, the lizard that in the middle of the uh, left hand corner. But the lizard is sitting on a uh, uh, rhododendron arboreal, which is a Laurasian plant. So you have a northern plant on a southern rock and a southern lizard on it. I, I, very few places on the planet that you have this kind of interesting mix. And also the northern uh, Laurasian uh, other species 
like blue magpie again endemic relic uh, can be found there you have our endemic subspecies of leopard as well next please the landscape as i mentioned the, the landscape the biodiversity and the, the knowledge of ecology and evolution of it the biogeography is changing and uh, the landscape ha had been changed and has been changing and now it's changing again uh, big time and uh, so which creates in this is a tea plantation of the sri, sri lankan highlands and as you can see the, the landscape has changed and now it is a, a kind of a monoculture and uh, still uh, if you go to a Sri Lankan uh, tea estates in the mountains, you will see all these elements still uh, clinging there. Next case. And uh, the biodiversity is under threat as well. These are recent images uh, from uh, less than 12 months. Uh, that includes the Sri Lankan leopard, by the way, the Sri Lankan leopard, the Panthera pardus potia, the subspecies is one of the eight uh, uh, subspecies in the world, the largest in the world and the Sri Lankan leopard is the only leopard that does not have a, a superior competitor in the landscape. In Asia, it's the tiger. So the leopard has to be arboreal to prevent the tigers. A tiger is a much aggressive and bigger animal. And in Africa, it has hyenas and lions. Again, much more aggressive and powerful than the leopard. So they are mostly arboreal. In Sri Lanka, leopard is the prime predator. Uh, so it is more uh, terrestrial. It, it acts, uh, it uh, behave like a dominant uh, cat, uh, not like a like hideous, uh, like an arboreal cat of Asia, rest of Asia and uh, Africa. So, so it, so as a result, it gets got bigger, and in the mountains, it got even darker. Again, following this uh, Glogger's rule and uh, and the melanism and the humidity related issues, so it is much colorful, bigger. Uh, predator compared to the other parts of the world. So, and these are, and then some, some of them are melanistic, and uh, the only confirmed melanistic leopard being uh, snared recently, about a few months now. And uh, so the biodiversity is under enormous threat. And in this light, uh, the, I think the people would question why we wanted to know phylogeny, why we wanted to know the, uh, the relationships, because whether we know or not, uh, things are disappearing in an alarming rate. Next, please. So, uh, and uh, uh, increasingly, uh, as a result of erosion, I guess, of uh, knowledge, people don't care. So, uh, so, that gives the opportunity, in my opinion. Next, please. To, uh, in this particular example, can we save the leopard in, our, in the context of biogeography, in the context of uh, putting the greater scheme of things, uh, as we discussed all morning, uh, in the in the in the, the, the inspirations that given by uh, Humboldt himself uh, to understand that the people living in it, the money that brought to Sri Lanka, the 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 the, the, the tea which is Ceylon tea, a brand itself, and uh, uh, like wine, good wines, good beer, uh, it, it's it's biogeography in economics where. You know, you know, you associate uh, the product's quality to a location. So the landscape is a critical element uh, in tea. So Ceylon tea is a brand because it comes from this old southern rocks, cool, humid uh, uh, climate, and, a, and, and with a very specific way of plucking, uh, with a very specific climatic and geographic condition, geologic condition. So, so the Ceylon tea has a biogeography in it itself, even though the tea plant comes from somewhere else. And uh, so the money that comes from it, the community is sustained and communities uh, uh, survive and also flourish uh, over, the, over the centuries, and it has to be taken into account. The, the bio biodiversity loss and the, the biodiversity in the tea estates has to be considered. And then the, uh, the landscapes, the, the, the critical, uh, like only I think only 0.6% of country uh, character of the mountain forest is left, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, the total land uh, area of Sri, yeah, Sri Lanka. So anyway, it itself uh, a, a kind of daunting task. How we use the knowledge on ecology and evolution, the landscapes and the biodiversity together, the biogeography, to do this uh, next place. And uh, so as I mentioned, 
So the tea estates are, yes, in a way, monocultures, and they are man-made cloud forest in my little mind. And, uh, no, go back. Sorry. So, the one in the uh, right hand, the lower right hand side is a, is a, a managed uh, tea estate to, to, uh, to retain these uh, elements of the, uh, the micro habitats, uh, the, the, to reduce the, 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 uh, the monoculture nature of it, and to, uh, to provide uh, the uh, riverine uh, ecosystems, and uh, in some cases, even the, uh, using organic and reducing the, the fertilizer footprint. Uh, and when you do that, you can connect these maybe into a greater uh, landscape. Uh, next, please. And uh, there, are the, the Sri Lanka leopard is a, is, a, is, a, is a lineage that is endemic to Sri Lanka and the subspecies several. And using these cloud forests for, for millennia and beyond. And they Actually, so this, this leopard is not an animal that moved into the plantation and causing trouble to the plantation owners, but it is the, the, the one key element of this mountain uh, landscape where the, the Ceylon tea is produced. And uh, the, Ceylon, the one key symbol of uh, like a like really kind of a, in a way a sexier and a, and a, and a, and a, and a very uh, kind of a, uh, uh, aggressive in a way and a unique uh, symbol could be of the mountains could be its endemic leopard, a big cat that can utilize this landscape to move from one uh, isolated uh, mountain forest back to another isolated mountain forest. Back. To do that, the, 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 the planters, the guardians, the, the keepers, the workers has to understand or to educate these, uh, the value of this man-made uh, cloud forest, uh, stunted forest, uh, and their linkage, and its role in linkage, linking the, uh, the, the more diverse, much more complex uh, remain, remain, remaining patches of the forest. Uh, there should be laws, yes, so the ecology of the leopard has to be learned, and as you can see in the middle, oh, I must credit that, so this middle uh, photo is actually coming from the Vice President of Sri Lanka Ecological Association, you know, Dr. Ino Kapudavidanaki and her team uh, working on them. And the, the, in the background of that uh, leopard picture, you can see a camera trap. So the, the second camera trap in front actually took this. Uh, so I think they have the other picture from the other side. So, so, the, so, so the leopard has to be studied uh, in a much different toolkit where Humboldt had in his uh, position uh, three, th three centuries ago, but uh, the same challenges, same uh, uh, scientific curiosity, and a different set of rules, uh, dif different set of permits, different set of bureaucracy, different set of uh, uh, financial uh, issues uh, has to be there. So the ge biogeographer would have enough issues to overcome, just like uh, the days of uh, Humboldt. And then with that, you know the ecology, evolution, the value of leopard, the value of the mountain, geology, the value of the, uh, the economy, the, the communities uh, need uh, that support, and the country, the leaders and all, that would benefit uh, from maintaining both the leopard, the, the tea, and uh, the money that comes into tea and tourism and the pride. Uh, so the, the putting biogeography into the conservation biology uh, standpoint, I think would uh, truly resurrect uh, Humboldt and his legacy. Uh, because uh, all uh, uh, like modern ecologists, I think followed the, 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 the or uh, benefited the hard work of uh, Humboldt in science, like Marco Polo, uh, Ibn Battuta, all these explorers who seek out to know uh, going beyond their abilities and capacities. I think, yeah, it's, it's, so, so yeah, so that's a, just a kind of a 
KL Pester. I think uh, we will uh, continue this uh, uh, in uh, in the coming years. Uh, thank you for listening.